So we want to continue talking about powers, brackets, and signed numbers. We've talked about each of these separately, but not all together. Remember that we said that the exponent applies to what it is directly beside. So we have in the first case, two times two times two. And in the second case, two times two times two. But notice that I've written it a little bit differently. We can do the same thing here. And here. I'd like you to pause your video and answer the next four questions. I hope you showed the repeated multiplication. So you can see in my first example, there's only one negative sign, but it's an odd number of negative signs. So my product is negative. In the next example, we have three negative signs, but again, it's an odd number of negative signs and my product is negative. If you haven't already done so, pause your video and answer the next two. Here's where we have to be careful. You can see in the first example, we have one negative sign, an odd number, so the product is negative. In the second example, we have four negative signs, an even number, and the product is positive. When we have an odd exponent, With a negative base, our answer will be negative. When we have an even exponent and the negative base is in brackets, then we're going to have a positive product. Be careful about your brackets, pay attention, use them carefully. Now this becomes important when we're evaluating algebraic expressions. These are known as expressions because they have no value unless we give values to X and Y. In this case, we're going to let X equal negative five and Y equal negative three. I'm going to suggest that whenever you're given a negative value for a variable, it's a good idea to use brackets. So we have negative five all squared because notice I'm squaring X and X is negative five plus Y, which is negative three, all over three times Y. Now we're just following order of operations. Order of operations says take care of any exponents, negative five times negative five. I do want to only have one sign here. The signs are different. And I can simplify this multiplication in the denominator. It's all I have there. Be careful, it's not subtraction. Now it's 22 over negative nine, but we don't like to need leave a negative sign in the denominator. I'm going to write it outside of my fraction. Let's try the next one. Did you remember this negative sign out front? We have a negative of y squared. That's a little bit tricky. It makes it a good test question, a good exam question. So we have the negative 
of negative three times negative three or positive nine there. These two negatives become a plus sign. And two times negative five is negative 10. Negative five plus four, the signs are different. So I know I'm gonna subtract nine minus five is four, but the absolute value of negative nine is greater. So I have a negative answer there. Remember when we have a negative divided by a negative, an even number of negative signs, it becomes positive. And of course we can simplify this fraction, divide the numerator and the denominator by two. Pause your video and try this one. The substituting is often the most tricky part. In the numerator, I see I can combine these two signs. I can do the same thing in the denominator. And of course, I want to simplify that exponent. So we have negative five plus three all over positive nine plus, oops, not plus four, plus five. Negative five plus three, nine plus five is 14. These can both be divided by two. And that negative sign, we can leave it in the numerator or we can write it outside of the fraction. Both of these are correct. We should talk about a few definitions since we'll be talking about algebraic expressions. These expressions are made up of variables and constants, our numbers and our variables. They include addition and subtraction. And expressions we say are made up of terms. It's important that you understand the definition of a term. A term, for example, could be said to be 4x squared y minus 5x cubed. So this is an algebraic expression. This algebraic expression has two terms, two parts that are being subtracted. Now, what is a term? I said there's two terms here. A term can be just a number or it can be the product of a number and variables. It could be just one variable it could be more than one variable. So we said that the example of that algebraic expression has two terms. The first term is 4x squared y. This is a product of a number. And you can see that the variable x is raised to the power of two. Y is just raised to the power of one. The second term is negative 5x cubed. Again, it's a product. It's the multiplication of negative five and x cubed. Sometimes we're going to refer to the numerical coefficient. We often just use the word coefficient and imply that we're talking about a number. This is the number that multiplies the variables in the term. So here are some examples. What are the coefficients in each expression? Well, in the first one, I can see that 23 is multiplying the variables. Pause your video and write down the numerical coefficient for each of the next two examples. Okay. 
Do you understand that this one, x over five, could be written as one over five times x? This shows us that the numerical coefficient is one over five. This example could be written as negative one times a to the power of six b c squared. So we can see again that the numerical coefficient here is negative one. We'll be asking for the numerical coefficient or just the coefficient in some of the questions that we do more often in Math 103. If we're talking about a monomial, we are talking about one term. So for example, 3x cubed y. Remember, a term is the multiplication, the product of a number and variables. A binomial is the sum or difference of two terms. So for example, 3x cubed y minus 4x squared. Now we have two terms we are subtracting. A trinomial, what do you think? It's the sum or difference of three terms. So we can take our binomial and just add or subtract another term. A polynomial is the word we use when we're talking about monomials, binomials, trinomials, or even those expressions that have more than three terms. But it's not an infinite number. We can always count the number of terms. What you're going to hear us talking about most often in this course are like terms. This is an important definition. Like terms have exactly the same variables raised to the same exponent. The coefficient, the number in front can be different. So for example, three X squared Y, negative five X squared Y, these both have x squared y. The coefficients in front are different. That's okay. These are like terms. So look at these examples here. 4x squared y, negative x squared y. Are these like terms? Yes, they are. The x squared y is the same in both of them. Pause your video and decide whether or not the next two are like terms. This one is not. There's an a in this expression. There's not an a in the second one. This one is. Order doesn't matter. They both have m squared. They both have p cubed. These are like terms. So let's talk about adding and, ex and subtracting with algebraic expressions. We can only add and subtract like terms. So we're going to be looking for like terms. The variables and their powers stay the same. We add and subtract the numerical coefficients. So let's look at this example. In number one, these are like terms. They all contain x cubed. x cubed stays the same we add and subtract the numerical coefficients. Eight plus one is nine, minus 11, negative two. Question two, these are all like terms. So we keep the like terms 
and we add and subtract the coefficients. Negative four minus seven is negative 11. Negative 11 plus 15, positive four. Now in question three, these are not all like terms. We have x squared in two of the terms, but x to the power of one in the other two. Remember, we only combine like terms. So first we can add 2x plus 8x, that's 10x. Remember the variable stays the same, so does its exponent. And then we have plus 9x squared minus 11x squared, negative 2x squared. Pause your video and simplify the next one. So 7AB plus 11AB is 18AB. Notice we don't change the exponents when we're adding and subtracting. Negative 6AC minus 8AC minus 14AC. I think we will leave the distributive property for our final video this week.